All right, boys, how is it going? We're back again with another drift car build for the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC. In this video, we're gonna be building up the brand new Duclasse Tulip M100. And you can pick this car up from the Southern San Andreas Super Autos website for $1.65 million. That is absolutely insane, but kinda gotta pay to play these days in GTA, I guess. But yeah, this is the car. Obviously, Southern San Andreas Super Autos is where you get it. And today, I'm I'm going to be showing you guys the drift build that I did for mine. So uh, yeah, this is kind of how I modified it. So I'm going to show you guys pretty much all of the parts that I used to make uh, a drift build out of this car. Um, and then after that, we're going to take this onto the track and then I'm going to show you guys uh, how it drifts with a controller camera and also give you a basic breakdown of, you know, the goods and the bads about this car when it comes to drifting. So for the sake of this build, um, and for any of my other drift builds, I'm going to skip over the aesthetic stuff, but if you guys do want to see the parts that I choose for that, feel free to let me know in the comments. But anyways, first off, armor, we are going to run 100% armor. This car, just like the Anis 300R that we modified uh, previously, um, this car cannot be stanced manually using a weapon, so that means that you could pretty much do everything you want with regard to armor, and it won't really impact your ability to stance it. You can also not stance this car through the interaction menu um, really the only thing we're going to be doing is low grip tires for this build i'll go over that in a little bit moving on to brakes we're going to leave those brakes stock um, next up for the engine we're going to obviously max that out ems upgrade level four really simple all this stuff is all aesthetics um, lights, livery, plate, respray, blah, blah, blah. Next up for the spoiler, um, we're going to run no spoiler. However, if you wanted to run one, it really won't make that much of a difference because we're using low grip tires for this build. So maybe if you're going for a certain aesthetic with your build, you could throw on the spoiler. And if you want to drift it, it really won't impact anything again because we're using low grip tires. So that's all done there. Next up for the suspension, I chose to leave the suspension stock. Now, based on what I've seen with the 300R and some other cars out of this update, lowering the suspension will actually increase grip a little bit. With the 300R, it actually helped to lower it down to the ground because that car was so snappy and to make it feel more planted, it was better to run the lower suspension. But for the sake of the M100 here, I'd recommend just leaving it stock so it's as slippery as possible. In reality, running the lowest suspension won't make a huge difference but for the sake of making it as easy as possible to drift. We're just gonna leave that suspension stock. Um, next up for the transmission, we're going to max that out, obviously, for the sake of being able to quickly repeat the mid-drive speed boost. This is kind of a flaw of the car, and I'll go over that when we get into the drifting review of this thing, but race transmission to make it as responsive as we can. Then for the turbo, we're also going to do the turbo tuning, really simple, want to max out that power. And then in the wheels, wheel type doesn't matter. I actually left the stock rims because I think they look beautiful on this car. But anyway, going into tires, obviously for tire enhancements, we are going to run the low grip tires as you guys can see here. We can't actually see it, but those are the low grips that I have on the car currently. And that's what's going to help us drift this thing a hell of a lot easier. But yeah, that's really about everything when it comes to all of the modifications you'll need to drift it. So now we're going to take it to my testing track and we're actually going to slide this and see how it goes. All right, boys, we're now on the track with the Tulip M100 here built up for drifting. And already right off rip, you guys can see this car is a little bit more prone to oversteer, which is good. I'm not even trying to engage the mid-drive speed boost, so it is a pretty good single gear drifter. I will say that. If you just tap the handbrake, this car has enough power, really, to link together pretty long slides if you're just keeping it in first gear. A little bit more prone to oversteer, as I said, you can pretty clearly see that there. Um, but what I want to show you guys really and what I want the focus of this review to be is on higher speed drifting because this is kind of one of this car's major flaws is the transmission is just not super responsive. Um, with a lot of cars, normally with a lot of high powered drift cars, if you try to engage the mid-drive speed boost at a higher speed just by quickly letting off the handbrake and then, or quickly letting off the accelerator, then tapping the handbrake and slamming right back on the throttle, that'll be enough to engage the mid-drive speed boost. But because of this car, either the transmission itself or the engine just not having enough torque, as you guys can see, um, it might be a little bit hard. I'll, I'll shut up in a second so you guys can actually hear what it sounds like. But in this car, it's actually pretty hard to repeat the mid-drive speed boost at those higher speeds unless you really, really slam down on the handbrake. And sometimes that can be a little bit hard to control as you guys just saw me spin out there. So yeah, let me, uh, let me show you what it would look like and what it kind of sounds like when this happens.
There we go. So you guys heard there, basically a couple different attempts for me to actually try to engage the mid-drive speed boost as I would in a normal car. Didn't really go so well. The car was like, it would pick up revs a little bit when I actually tapped the handbrake, and then right when I let out, the revs would just drop and the car would bog down. So in order to actually consistently repeat the mid-drive speed boost for those higher speed drifts in this car, you're either going to make sure that you're going at a pretty high speed, either that or tap the handbrake a little bit longer just to make sure that the car actually actually breaks those tires loose as you guys will see there it took me a couple attempts but when I really hold down that handbrake and let it out you guys will see that I'll get the speed boost that I need to actually link together longer turns um, but all that considered I mean even then it's not a horrible drift car I would say it's probably not as good as the 300R mainly because of this issue the 300R that we reviewed before was way more responsive about the same in terms of power but way more responsive in terms of being able to consistently re-engage the mid-drive speed boost Boost. I will say though that the M100 here can hold a lot more angle and just feels a little bit more natural handling wise as a drift car. The 300R was really really uh, snappy but the M100 feels more balanced in terms of weight and as you can see there it was super smooth going into that reverse entry. Um, it doesn't hold the most angle in the world but it definitely is a little bit better than again the 300R even though that's not a good point of comparison when we're just looking at cars of this update. Um, these are the two best ones that I've tested so far uh, but yeah anyways i mean the m100 still has a crap ton of power for you to slide very easily again as i said when i first started drifting this car you can actually link together pretty decently long slides just in first gear i'm not even engaging the mid-drive speed boost i'm just tapping the handbrake and the car has enough power in first gear to be able to hold out a pretty long drift so if you're a beginner and you're just getting into drifting, this is pretty good. And it really doesn't force you to have to know all the ins and the outs of engaging the mid-drive speed boost and really having to control the car using the handbrake. So that's a pretty good advantage of this car. But again, for more hardcore drifters who want to drift this at higher speeds, that issue with the mid-drive speed boost is a little bit annoying. I just tried it a bunch there and I wasn't able to get it to work. Um, but because of that, I, I think in terms of a score out of 10 for this car, I'm going to have to give it the same score as the 300R. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. Although it feels more natural and more, you know, just generally better as a drift car in terms of handling, that issue with the handbrake and the inconsistency of the mid-drive speed boost in those higher speed drifts is just not the best in my opinion. Um, I want to be able to have a car that's super responsive and can really easily kick the rear end out and have an easy boost to link together very high speed turns. Um, and that's something that you won't get a lot in this car unless you get really lucky or you really practice slamming down on that handbrake. As you guys will see, again, the more I slam down on the handbrake and hold it, the more of a boost I'll get. But that can kind of create some inconsistencies in terms of speed because you're going to slow the car down when you tap the handbrake and then it's going to break the tires loose and that can be so sudden that it will lead to oversteer and you'll spin the car out. Um, so because of that aspect of the handling, again, probably I think deserving of a 7 out of 10, but everything else considered, I mean this car, it looks amazing. I mean this is one of the more, I don't know, better looking cars and maybe that's just because it's almost an exact copy of an 80s Malibu. I mean it's almost like 100% the exact same car. I'm surprised Rockstar got away with that. Um, and the customization is really good too. I'm, obviously I know that's not the focus of this video but if you guys are willing to put in you know 1.7 million or probably even more than that to upgrade this you're probably going to have a pretty cool car. Um, drag performance wise and on a track I really don't know. We're going to have to wait for some other people in the community to test that i.e. Bruffy and maybe some other people who like drag racing but we'll see what this car does in terms of drag racing and overall track performance but as a drift car I think in kind of my realm of things I think a 7 out of 10 is a fair score for this thing so i'm gonna leave it there hopefully that was helpful and insightful for you guys if you're planning to drift the new tulip m100 uh, hopefully the build i showed and everything that i just talked about here will give you enough insight to decide whether or not you want this as a drift car as i said it's decent if you really kind of force it to drift and if you actually want to drift it i would not buy this car specifically for drifting it's super expensive and it obviously i think has its uses elsewhere in terms of customization and performance so specifically for drifting i'd say 
say this is a no in terms of if you want to buy it or not just for that but obviously if you want a really cool like 80s car that you can use for other things then it's definitely worth taking a look at it is very expensive though so you're gonna have to make that decision for yourselves but anyways that's really about all I have to say about the new Tulip M100 I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are having fun with the new update and yeah that's pretty much everything I hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next video